I want to start this a little differently today. If you follow obesity medicine closely, you know most days are incremental. Another study, another update, another promise that something big is coming someday. Yesterday was not one of those days. Yesterday, Novo Nordisk made a major announcement. The company filed a new obesity drug with the FDA, and that filing tells us a lot about where this entire space is headed next. Novo has submitted Cagrisema for FDA approval for chronic weight management. It's a once weekly injectable that combines semaglutide with a second hormone pathway called amylin. If approved, it would be the first fixed dose injectable combination of a GLP-1 receptor agonist and an amylin analog for obesity treatment. That matters not just because of how much weight people lost in the trials, but because of how this drug works and who it may help. Welcome to Downsize if you're new here. Welcome if you've been with us for a while. My name is Christopher Drum. My wife Lorraine and I have lost more than 150 pounds using Zepbound Manjaro Terzepatide. I started at 286.4 pounds and today I'm maintaining a right around 185 pounds. These medications have been life-changing. We didn't get here by chasing shortcuts or willpower. We got here by treating obesity as the chronic disease that it is and staying on medical therapy or as I like to say, just take the shot. That experience is why we started this channel. We tell the stories of real people, people who are trying to figure this out in real time, while also breaking down what the science, the data, and the policy actually mean for life on these medications. Before we go any further, an important note. I am not a doctor. Lorraine is not a doctor. This is educational and informational content only. Now. Here's why this announcement matters. Novo Nordisk is making this move at a moment when it is fighting aggressively with Eli Lilly for leadership in obesity medicine, a market already estimated at roughly $27 billion and still growing rapidly. But this announcement is not just about competition, it's about biology. According to Novo's FDA filing and announcement materials, Cagrisema is intended for adults with obesity or adults who are overweight with at least one weight-related comorbidity. It is a fixed-dose combination of semaglutide, the GLP-1 already approved as Wagovi and Ozempic, and Cagrilinotide, a long-acting amylin analog. Amylin represents a different pathway than GLP-1 alone. Amylin is a hormone that is co-secreted with insulin from the pancreas. It plays a powerful role in regulating appetite, satiety, and meal size at the brain level. While GLP-1 primarily reduces hunger and slows digestion, amylin helps control how much you eat once you start eating. In Cagrisema, Novo is targeting these complementary obesity-related pathways at the same time. In simple terms, this drug is not just pushing harder on the same lever, it's pulling a second one. That distinction matters for patients because not everyone responds the same way to a GLP-1 therapy alone. Some people respond quickly, some people respond slowly, some people don't respond at all. Some plateau earlier than expected and some never achieve the level of weight loss they hoped for, even when they stay on treatment and do everything right. For those people, the medications have failed them. It is not that they have failed, it is that the medications have failed them. So new medications like this are truly exciting. For those patients, adding an amylin pathway could represent a meaningful new option. The FDA filing is based on results submitted from Novo's Phase Three Redefined Clinical Development Program. The centerpiece of that program is Redefine One a 68-week randomized double-blind placebo and active controlled phase three trial enrolling 3,417 adults with obesity or overweight with at least one obesity-related complication and without diabetes. According to data Novo submitted to the FDA, Cagrisema delivered some of the strongest late-stage obesity results seen to date. When evaluating outcomes, regardless of whether patients stayed on treatment, participants taking Cagrisema lost an average of 20.4% of their body weight at 68 weeks, compared with 3% in the placebo group. Now, still a bit lower than we reported with retotrutide, but right there with terzepatide. When evaluating outcomes, assuming all patients stayed on treatment, average weight loss reached 22.7%, which Novo describes as roughly 
The average starting body weight in the Kagrasima group was about 236 pounds, meaning many participants lost more than 50 pounds during the trial. More than 91.9% of participants achieved at least 5% weight loss, compared with 31.5% on placebo. And in the supportive secondary analysis included in the FDA submission, about 54% of participants who entered the trial with obesity reached a BMI below 30 by week 68. In the placebo group, 11.1% achieved that threshold. Those numbers matter. They also help explain why Cagrisem appears to slightly edge out trisepatide over a similar treatment period. And it's important to be clear about what that does and does not mean. We don't have a head-to-head -head trial, so no one can scientifically say Cagrisem beats trisepatide. But based on the biology and how these drugs work, it's reasonable to speculate that Cagrisema could outperform trisepatide for certain patients, especially slower responders or people who plateau early on GLP-1 therapy. This may not be about one drug winning outright. It may be about giving patients another powerful option, another powerful tool, when the first one doesn't take them far enough. It's important to say this carefully. These are cross-trial comparisons, not head-to-head -head studies. But based on late-stage data over comparable time frames, Kagersema's average weight loss appears modestly higher. That said, the most important part of this story isn't winning by a small margin. It's expanding options. NOVA also included results from Redefine 2, a separate 68-week phase three trial with 1,206 adults with type two diabetes and obesity or overweight. As expected, weight loss was more modest in the diabetes population. But Kagrasema again demonstrated statistically significant and clinically meaningful benefit versus placebo. Safety and tolerability matter just as much as efficacy. We all know that if you can't keep taking it, doesn't matter. Nova reported that the safety profile of Kagrasema was consistent with the GLP-1 class with gastrointestinal side effects being the most common. In Redefine 1, 79.6% of Kagrasema patients experienced gastrointestinal adverse events compared with 39.9% on placebo. Nausea occurred in 55% versus 12.6%. Constipation in 30.7% versus 11.6%. Vomiting in 26.1% versus 4.1%. Discontinuation due to adverse events was 5.9% for Cagrisema versus 3.5% for placebo. So all of those prior numbers, although they sounded a little scary at points, when it got down to it, only 5.9% of patients discontinued the treatment because the side effects were too bad. Injection site reactions occurred in about 12% of patients, which analysts believe is likely driven by the amylin component. This is where real-world realism matters. Clinical trials are not controlled environments. Real-world use is messier. People miss doses, insurance coverage changes, side effects vary, and that's why durability, tolerability, and pricing matter just as much as peak efficacy. The reality of all the average numbers from these trials is pretty simple when we start talking to the community. Many of us have out paste the numbers from the trials. So if you look at the trisepatide numbers, they're saying 18 to 20 percent is your average weight loss. Well, I've personally lost 38 percent of my body weight. I know many people who have lost 50 and 60 percent of their body weight. So once these meds get into the real world, we start to learn how they can actually react, what their potential truly are. Novo also highlighted the broader Redefine program in its FDA filing, including Redefine 3, a cardiovascular outcomes trial, and Redefine 11, a longer duration obesity study designed to assess long-term safety and durability. Now let's talk about the part of this announcement that matters just as much as the science. Pricing, access, and affordability. We talk about it all the time. Because a breakthrough you cannot afford is not a breakthrough for you. Novo has a real opportunity here, and it's bigger than just winning another clinical trial. If Novo truly shows up for patients on pricing and access, it can regain the lead in obesity medicine and win. Not just on efficacy charts, but in the real world. 
Aggressive, patient-centered pricing can expand the market, drive prescription growth, support long-term profitability, and build something this category badly needs. Genuine patient loyalty. Genuine brand loyalty. That's how leadership is built. Not by squeezing the market, but by expanding it. Not by winning one headline, but by earning trust over time. Kagrasema gives Novo the chance to do exactly that. And if FDA approvals move forward on a reasonable timeline, sometime in 2026, the obesity landscape will change dramatically. The major GLP-1 drugs people already know, semaglutide and terzepatide, sold as Ozempic, Wagovi, Manjaro, and Zepbound, will be joined by Orforglopron from Eli Lilly and Cagrasema from Novo Nordisk with Retitrutide close behind, pending regulatory timelines. And this isn't a two-horse race. Pfizer, Viking, Amgen, Roche, AstraZeneca, and biotechs like Zealand Pharma and Structure Therapeutics are all coming, and they're coming fast. And there's dozens more around the world. At that point, competition will no longer be just injectable versus injectable. It will be injectables versus pills, single agents versus combination therapies, premium pricing versus access-driven growth. The war will be on for efficacy and price. The value equation will be defined. And that kind of competition can only benefit patients. More options, more leverage, more pressure on pricing, and more people finally able to get treatment for a chronic disease that has been ignored for far too long. For patients, this isn't about who wins a race. It's about finally hearing a doctor say, yes, there are options, and yes, you can afford it. That's what this announcement points towards. If this coverage is helpful, please like this video and subscribe to The Downsized. We publish new videos every day focused on GLP-1s, obesity, access, and real-world experience. Let me know what you think about the opportunities for Cagrasema. How would it fit in your treatment plan? Are you excited about having new drug options? What does the future look like for you, for obesity medication, and for the GLP-1 community? My name is Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized.